What our role is to do uh, as a 1901 law association is to provide financial and practical support for individuals and families who are in need. Here's the principle that explains how Solidarité Anglicane works. Uh, we obtain funding in a variety of ways, um, different sorts of donations, membership fees, um, fundraising activities, or contributions raised by clients who use the Lyon Anglican Church Counseling Service and give donations for the counseling services they receive. All, all of that money, uh, we can then uh, pool it and manage it in order to redistribute it to people and other charities. So we provided uh, support uh, for individuals, either in the form of living expenses or in the form of exceptional expenses. Often those were expenses related to obtaining refugee status. We also really stepped up our networking efforts and we did various things in that regard. Whenever you see a job ad uh, posted on our internal Facebook page, often it's Armand or Rachel who puts that up there. Well, that, that's networking. That's trying to see if somebody in our community would be interested in that job. It just could provide a match. You can do it too if you're in town someday and you see an ad put up somewhere. Hey, you can shoot a photo of it with your phone and put it up on our closed web page, and that helps network. As for jobs and job training and the French language training, that's often communication that we carry out with other associations and partners, such as other churches or other relevant actors. And for example, um, we can recognize the contributions of our friends Fabio and John and Muniz who do an awful lot in this community in terms of providing French language training and just providing opportunities for people to build relationships and talk to each other. So they, they've been instrumental in helping us unite people for various purposes, and that's really cool. And we also uh, contributed to study scholarships that were provided by Life Springs School of Ministry, which is running here in Lyon from 2021 to 2023. Um, so Life Springs gave a contribution, we gave a contribution as well, and those pooled contributions made study scholarships so that several participants could take part in the School of Ministry in an affordable way. And in early 2022, we've kind of been carrying on like last year, but we've added on a couple of key components here. Uh, first of all, with the conflict in Ukraine, this has obviously provided some new jobs to do, some new opportunities and challenges. So in that regard, we've been working a lot with an association called ACLAM and the Association Catholique pour la Curie et l'accompagnement des migrants. Mm -hmm. So that's an association based here in Lyon uh, that has a number of um, partner associations, including us. And the role is to uh, welcome newcomers who are migrants or refugees. Okay. And so... One thing we've been doing for them is collecting donations for the Ukrainian cause and simply passing it on to them. And they've been collecting from other sources as well. It's been able to sort of widen their net and get more money in so that uh, people who arrive in Lyon from Ukraine can have their basic needs met. And it's also paid for their transport and getting here in the first place. Um, Another thing we've been doing is advising people who are hosting Ukrainian refugees, just telling them about what language training opportunities that might come up or housing opportunities or answering their administrative questions, directing them to places where they can find secondhand clothes. Um, just recently, um, uh, through our networking, there was a family with two children who managed to enroll their two children in a summer camp. So it, it doesn't revolutionize the planet, but it makes one family happier for the summer. So this is good news, and it's the sort of thing that we can do. Um, in the refugee area, another thing I'd like to mention is the very valuable contributions of John McGregor and Sarah Gro. Uh, they're both Solidarité Anglicane members. John is our historic go-to person and expert reference man in all affairs relating to uh, refugee relationships, uh, relationships with other associations and so on. So he's been 
linking us up with a lot of people. And Sarah Groh is being mentored under his guidance so she can carry out that same sort of role as well. So that's super. And we thank them for what they are doing. And finally, one another cool thing that we're doing with Ukrainian refugees uh, involves a three-party agreement that we have with the landlord of a studio, a Ukrainian mom and her, her two kids living there, and us. Okay, so the landlord is providing the studio for them rent free. And in return, the Ukrainian mom and their kids are to keep it clean and in well rep good repair. They're to be good neighbors to the people around them. They're to manage their budget, pay their electricity bills and so on, and ask us if they need help with their administrative papers and stuff. So any paperwork they get, they forward on to us and our role is to help them and guide them in that regard with all of their administrative matters, whether it's their tax sheet or stuff like that. And that way they can become better inserted within the community and just have an easier future moving ahead as they move toward a life in France, at least for the time being. And what's nice for us in this arrangement is that if any of this paperwork is too tough for us to understand, we just contact a clam. And indeed it's a clam that's sort of um, sort of the, the overseer of this whole thing, because a clam is actually working with about 50 uh, refugees at the moment, all over the Lyon area. And it's just too many for them, <clears throat> excuse me, to deal with the nitty gritty of the tiny details of each of these individuals. So they've sort of farmed out to their member organizations like us, different members who need these different agreements set up. And that way, so if some paperwork comes in for this Ukrainian mom and we don't know how to help, we can ask a clam and they will help us. So we're not alone. We're just playing a role as a partner to help this mom and her kids get their lives going again. Mm. And finally, um, we have decided to make some donations this year. We, we made some last year to Life Springs School of Ministry for scholarships. This year we've sent money and that'll just be for their general operations. They can choose what they want to do with that. Um, we're ma making a donation to the Fondation de l'Armée du Salut as well in the upcoming days. Um, we, they, so they work with um, people in need in Lyon and elsewhere uh, with social restaurants and other forms of assistance. We've made a donation to Mercy Ships, which has a large surgical vessel moored in Senegal, I think at the moment, and they do surgeries free of charge on people who need medical care. And we have sent one other donation to the Association Culturelle de l'Église Réformée Évangélique. And that's a connection we uh, were able to make through Diana Saran. And perhaps Diana could turn her mic on for a minute if she wishes and tell us what we, what, what they are doing. Right, I think I've switched everything on. Yes. We, we can hear you fine, Diana. Okay, right. So some of you know I alternate between uh, Trinity Church and this French Église Réformée Evangélique, French-speaking church. Uh, that donation, that dom denomination, uh, organises a kind of chaplains conference, a bit like ICS organises, and that Ben goes to. And this year, my son and his wife went to the conference, and there they met a lot of pastors working in churches in Ukraine or in the surrounding areas and working now with the millions of, of um, refugees that are coming out of Ukraine. And they had produced a list of the things that they urgently need, which covers medical things, but also the basics like children, babies, nappies and toothpaste and, and very practical things also like batteries and phone chargers and torches and things like that. So Alex and Suzanne came back from the conference with this list, determined that they would do something for this. So they put out an appeal and uh, Solidarity have very generously sent money to them. And next week, Monday the 20th, they're setting off, my, my son and his wife have a, a very big vehicle because they have a big family. So they're filling it with all these goods that, that are needed by these churches that are working with refugees. And they're going off, I think, to Poland and Slovakia next week to deliver what, what they can to help this uh, effort. So they're very thankful to Solidarity for the generosity and 
uh, also for prayers for all this work that's going on and also hopefully for their safety getting there and back. Mm. So thank you. Thanks, Diana. Hey, Diana. So that is a superb project. I'll just rewind one second here. The simple cupboard is something rebooted. We rebooted this year. And what Ben was saying about the action of the sun kind of makes me think of the simple cupboard because, hey, Jesus was the God who served breakfast to his friends on the beach, right? Okay. Jesus does not want people to be hungry. So don't be hungry, please. It, um, there is a cupboard in the basement of Rue Bancel with foodstuffs and hygiene supplies waiting for you if you need them. There are even bags there too. Please take what you need. That's what it's there for. It's kind of a mix of donations for local and more distant efforts. So we thought it would be kind of cool to have a mix. Uh, Life Springs and the Salvation Army, that's closer to home. Um, the efforts made by, by the church group that Diana told us about, that's more like Poland, Slovakia, and finally over to uh, Senegal with the Mercy Ship. So lots of stuff can be happening in various parts of the world through your donations. The first slide shows the position of the accounts, uh, Solidarity Anglican accounts on the 1st of January 2021 and the 31st of December 2021. So we've got two accounts, the current account and the savings account. So you can see that at the beginning of the year, the total stood at 6,580 euros. And by the end of the year, we had 11,433 euros. Next slide, please. And here we've, we can see a breakdown of um, the amount of money that came for each category and the percentage that represented. So you can see that we get money from donations for named causes, fundraising, for example, uh, the Christmas sales, the cakes that are baked by various people, uh, the, Christmas the Christmas cakes, and uh, now Julie's doing birthday cakes in particular, and general, so that's fundraising. Then we have a lot of money comes in from lax donations for the counseling service, and then uh, membership, and then just general donations, which aren't donations for a named cause, but just uh, into the coffers generally. And then we can see that expenditure, we had uh, administrative expenses, which involves uh, uh, renting the room for the counseling service, and also expenses for the counseling service, which is also paying for their phone line and things like that. Then we've got the liability insurance, and then we paid out money in support for individuals. So either giving uh, lump sums, often it's a lump sum combined with an interest-free loan. But then we made a, so a net profit, if you like, of 4,852 euros over last year. And because we had this big profit, uh, we, that's why we made the decision to recently to make the donations to the, in particular to the four charities that were close to our hearts. And also, perhaps we've got a lot of, we made a lot of money because we had, didn't have many requests from people within our own church community for help. So that might mean, if we're being optimistic, that it's because nobody needs any help, or it might mean that people aren't daring to ask or um, don't know how to do so. But if you need help, you can um, uh, contact one of the members of Collegiality Only Can for the form to fill in. And next slide, please. And so this is just a pretty version of the previous table where we've got two nice pie charts uh, which showing the income and the expenditure. So it's the same information as uh, before, but in a pictorial form. One thing I'm sure we'd like to do as an association is start up in-person social events again. So sometime after the summer holidays, we'll be talking about that and seeing what we can do to just celebrate as a community together. And hey, if it raises funds for our objectives, win-win, right? Um, and another thing that we're gonna just keep on doing as we've been doing before is continuing to be ears to hear about the needs around us. And that applies to all of us. If, if you just keeping your ears open, you may hear that somebody's having a bit of a tough time and they can be directed our way. Finally, um, I was saying that you can be ears, but you can also be lips, all right? You can tell us about your needs. Um, as you've seen through uh, Joanne's presentation, there is money available. And our mandate is to use that money. So feel free to think outside the box. Uh, for example, if you're a job hunter and you're going to interviews, but the clothes you have are just not great anymore, maybe they're worn out, contact us because we, we could maybe finance a new set of 
interview clothes for you and a crisp pair of shoes to make your job hunting go a bit better. Or maybe the computer that you use for your work or for your studies or for your job hunt is crashing all the time. Well, let us know. Maybe we can find out something more reliable. You don't need to be starving. And if you are starving, we can finance food needs too. But what I'm saying is we don't only finance basic survival needs if things are totally desperate. We can finance needs that come up that will make your job hunt easier or your studies easier or your daily life easier. Things that you couldn't comfortably finance on your own. Talk to us. We'll see what we can work out together. You can reach us in a variety of ways. You can talk to any of us who are on the board. You can email us, send us a WhatsApp. We also have two email addresses. One of them is solidarityanglican.lyon at gmail.com. And that's just for daily stuff. If it's not an emergency, you can reach us there. But if it's an urgent need, write sosdemandlyon at gmail.com instead. Because there you're not interacting just with us but also with a somewhat widened community of our church partners and other friends and helpers. It's not super wide and it remains confidential, but it spreads the net further. And for say more costly needs, we can maybe pool together and finance it as a group for you. It remains possible to join Solidarité Anglicane at any time. If you'd ever like to become a member, you can pay a 20 euro membership fee to Joanne by check or by cash, or else you can send it to our bank account directly. And even if you're not a member, you can help us by being ears, by praying for us, by buying a piece of cake at a cake sale or an entire cake from Julie, if you'd like to invest in something nice for a party. There's all sorts of ways there's all sorts of ways that we can do this together and help people in need. Mm. And so we thank each and every one of you for your support over the past year and in the times to come. It's very much appreciated. We do have a good team. We've got a great set of people who've joined the board. We have great members who are maybe not on the board, but also playing key roles like John and Sarah, for example. And it's just super cool because... Together, we really are stronger and we spread the net wider and we can do more.